Now, this book was a hard little thing to find. Um, I went to multiple thrift stores for multiple weeks looking for the right book. And before I kept finding them everywhere, and then this time it was really hard. But this downtown book, I don't know, it's, I think it's about Amish people getting married in Canada. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the other ones, but it's kind of around the same shape, so it's all right. And you're gonna do the same task as you did on the other one. You're going to saran wrap the front half and the back half, so then you have a nice, clean, crisp edge with the glue not sticking to the covers. This was a big oopsie. When I picked my middle page, I picked the page with the big head on it with the angry kid and I had to use like six pieces of white paper to go over this kid's face so when you pick your middle page maybe pick something that's a little bit more neutral and not so angry um that'll work wine fine not wine maybe I need some wine I don't even drink wine continuing on so when you're going at it this um you're going to glue the outer outside pages and then put a piece of saran in between and then glue the other sides outside pages um and then you're going to press it overnight so it gets nice and dry and flat and yeah and oh 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 the kids his face is so scary See, look how nice that is, mm, bird wings. You're going to paint the cover black because the cover of the book is black. That's common sense at its finest. Um, this is just acrylic Martha Stewart paint. You can use whatever kind of acrylic paint you have. I did end up airbrushing over it with my black airbrush paint just because I wanted to give it a little bit more of a glossy look, but um, the acrylic paint works just fine. That's the same paint I used on my other storybook. You're ready to draw on your design. This pen that I'm using is a Prism Color Metallic Silver Pen. I don't know why I can't say that, and I've redone it six times, but that is what it's called. Um, and then a ruler. This pen was really nice. It was very fluid, so it did a really good job of actually like being able to do the whole book in very little time. The only downside of the pen was that it was very fluid, so it kind of would seep underneath my ruler every once in a while, and um, so I did have to go over it with a little bit of black acrylic just to cover up and touch up the edges. I would have done that anyway, but just to give you the heads up, if you're gonna use it just be careful about how hard you push because all of a sudden you have this like big blob and then you're trying to cover it up so be careful so I'm trying to like film as much as I can of me doing this um, for some reason when I set the camera up this time I didn't really take into account that my big blonde bob would be in the way so for half of the shoot um, you got to see that mm, or that oh that's nice yep I like looking at that that's great. I can totally see what you're doing, Michelle. So <laughs> with that being said, I apologize that um, it's not really a fluid start to finish drawing segment. Um, I just kind of try to add in as much as I could that didn't have too much of my big head in the way. So this is me just going over the little corners and stuff like that and adding on the, I guess, the hollow parts or the shadowy parts or whatever you might call it. Um, meaning like the little lines and stuff that are supposed to be black throughout the silver. Um, I just took black acrylic paint, the same paint that I used on the book, and went over it and cleaned up the edges where the silver might have seeped through or cleaned up where it needed to be a little bit more crisp.
To save you the time and hassle, maybe don't just draw the boxes on freehand. I mean, I measured them a little bit first, but I did not do a very good job and I had to go over and fix them like six times after. So take the time to measure it and do it properly. And if not, then don't take the time to measure it and do it properly. Because really, when it comes to people like me, I don't care, no one's gonna notice, so it's all good. When I started doing the inside lettering, I thought that it would be easier to, like, I mean, you're gonna draw out the H and the V first, but I thought it would be easier to kind of add in just the silver bits that are supposed to be silver and kind of backwards follow in the lines. But it kind of ended up being harder, so I gave up, and then I just colored the whole thing in silver and went over it with, um, my acrylic paint after, but it was kind of neat because the acrylic paint over top of this specific type of pen kind of, it was almost oily or how oil hits water and it just kind of spreads and it doesn't always cover everything, but it looked more natural and it looked how it was supposed to look if I were to do it the opposite way if that makes any sense. So um, if you end up doing it like me, it's easier definitely to cover it, color it all in first and then paint in your spot. But if you want to do it like this way, see I'm doing it in reverse, it took way more time and I just gave up. So up to you though. I made a little bit of a mistake there with the A, so don't look at it. Just cover it with your thumb and watch the rest of the video as normal. I just messed up, but um, as you can see, I kind of just did over it and then colored in what didn't need to be that silver and black.
The footage of me painting inside the H and V um, was an absolute train wreck. So really all you're gonna get to see is this short clip coming up and then you can just look online and find the pattern from Google. It's really easy to zoom in. I'm sure you can do it. I have full confidence. Um, this is just a glue and water mixture and you're gonna glue on the inside pages. Um, this is white scrapbooking paper. You can use computer paper, but uh, you might have to double layer it. The only suggestion I can give to you on this is make sure you press it overnight and you press it like with a quite a bit of weight because you're wanting it to flatten out as much as possible. One thing I did forget to mention is that when I was done pressing it, I took an Earl Grey tea bag and just heated it up a little bit and pressed it on the paper and it gave it more of that antique look. And that was it. You're done. Well, happy Easter, everyone. I hope you all had fun rooting around for your colored eggs and chocolate surprises this morning, because I sure did. I didn't really. I spent my whole morning making crumb coffin or crumb caca, but I like to call it crumb coffin because caca sounds gross, so. But, anywho, to get things started, I have made, um, as per requested, the Heroes and Villains Once Upon a Time storybook. Now, as you can see, this one was um, just like the other one in basic finding the book and just kind of gluing the pages together. It's very simple. It's actually quite easy. The only real kind of talent you need on this is just being able to eye the design off of a picture off online. Um, so this pen that I used is actually a prism color or prism art pen um, that's a metallic roll pen. You can find them at Michael's. Last time I used the Sharpie brand and I found it was kind of like it wasn't really inky enough, but this was super inky and it like it went on very smoothly. Actually, sometimes it went on too much and I had to repaint over in black. But that's the nice thing about this is that if you do paint it and you mess up, you can paint over it in black and no one's going to notice. So, yeah, so that is it. It actually uh, it turned out pretty cool. It, the design is pretty much the same as the Once Upon a Time storybook. It's a little bit different in the corners and stuff. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty simple. I think it turned out really cool. I'm really happy with it. Um, the inside I did just blank and um, that was just computer paper. And then I just did the Once Upon a Time. I um, painted that on or you could use a black pen if you wanted. And uh, it's all blank because really at this time we didn't know what the story was. So. But here we go. So that's it. Very simple. I hope this helps and uh, I hope you can do it for yourself and let me know how it turns out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you'd like to follow me um, on Instagram, it's G-G-A-E-T-Z-Z. -Z. If you want to subscribe to my channel, by all means, subscribe because like we could totally be best friends. And maybe not. But that's okay. You can come and watch me again. See ya!